This is Texans TV. What's up? <laughs> This is very cool, man. I grew up a big baseball fan, so to have the opportunity to do this, throw out the first pitch, is a huge honor. You know, I'm thankful and happy to have this opportunity here for the Astros. Really admire everything you've done. Thank you. Yes, you. Yes, sir. You know what I'm yeah. To have that support from Dust, it means a lot. And I'll definitely make sure I follow that advice because he's done it at a high level for a very long time and looked up to him for his entire career as long as I've been watching baseball. So proud of what he's done. All right, I'm no doubt. You, man. I appreciate it. All I'm right, thank you. you. Hey, anything you need, just okay. get my number from Anita. Okay. Anything. Will do. All right. All right. Thank you, man. Thinking we're good, man. A little cutter right to the outside corner. <laughs> Strike. Cool experience. Growing up a baseball fan makes it even, even more special. Steve Reich, that's our head coach, just dealing before the Astros game earlier in the week. D'Amico Ryan's throwing out that ceremonial first pitch, and hey, it's no coincidence, the Astros won that game later on that evening. My name's Drew Doherty. This is Texans 360. We got a fun show for you because a little bit later on, we're going to hear from some national experts about what they think the Texans' top two picks are going to look like on the field this year and in the future. Plus, we catch up with current Texans like running back Dario Gumbawale and wide receiver Nico Collins. But we start now with rookie minicamp. It went down last weekend. It was our first look at some of the newest Texans, and a lot of fun went down. Watch these guys on film for so many times, so long, right? We brought them in. Most of the guys we've met with on whether it's combine or 30 visits, and now it's just the next step of the process, right? Getting them here and seeing them actually go out on the field and perform the things that we're asking them to do. So it's just another part of the process. Definitely excited about just being able to put hands on them and see them in person. That's mostly what I'm excited about. <laughs> Uh, I'm just ready to compete. Uh, if, if my number gets called, I'm going to be ready. And I'm just here to compete, and that's what I'm going to do. Definitely the weather here is definitely different for me. Uh, Penn State, you know, we don't, get, we don't get hot that much. So, And I heard this ain't even hot. So, yeah, so, yeah that's definitely going to be the biggest challenge for me out there. First thoughts of the guys that we've drafted and all the guys that work, they're eager, right? They're eager to work. They're excited to work. They're hungry to get better. And you know, today with the rookie minicamp starting, what we try to get accomplished out of the rookie minicamp is just for our guys to get acclimated to what we're doing, right? There's a lot of, you know, different communication. At all times, we should visualize going to block the guy, not agility drills, right? We do that at 545 in college. We're not doing agility drills, right? Getting in the huddle saying a play call, coming out of the hole. It's the simple things that those guys have to get used to that's different from the college game where a lot of things are coming from the sideline, a lot of pictures, a lot of signal-based things, and they, they're not used to verbalizing and communicating a lot. So for us, it's like we're taking them back a couple steps to huddling, making sure they're, they're uh, <laughs> speaking loudly when they're in the huddle, offensively and defensively, and making sure as a quarterback and as linebackers, making sure that they are commanding those huddles. So it was a good first day, good e initial work with those guys, excited to see how they can come out tomorrow and just see where they got better. You know, the team has been, you know, everything I could have imagined. The coaches are hyped, they're having energy, and we just feed on that and we just keep going every day. But uh, the first couple of practices have been really great. They made it very clear, just come in here and be you. You know, there's no pressure. Just come in here, be you, have fun, bring energy, 
and just be together. I think that's the biggest thing that they harp on a lot that I'm really understanding is it's no pressure. You've been playing football all your life. You're just going out there and doing what you love to do. And it's no pressure to doing that. Just been doing everything since you've been doing since you were five years old. So that's what I really appreciate about the coaches here and the players here. It's exciting to get out on the field and actually get on the grass and work with guys. That's where, you know, I thrive. But now being a head coach, I have to learn how to step back a little bit and let the assistants do most of the hands-on work. And if I see a point or two I need to, you know, implement, I'll, I'll step in when I need to. But our, our assistants, and they've done a, it's awesome for me just to get out and see them work, see the energy that they bring to practice every day. Our coaches have done a outstanding job. I know you guys seen them a little bit today, but just over the past few weeks working with our veterans, I'm uh, very proud of our coaches and what they've done so far. Those are some of the rookies. They're hoping to make an impact in 2023 and beyond, and their first chance to do so will be on September 10th in Baltimore against the Ravens. That's game one of the season. And here's a little bit more about what you'll see in 2023. It's the official schedule release video of the Houston Texans. Since you wanna ride, let me show you what to do. Yeah, I'm riding, yeah, I'm riding. Real low, real low. Right around that south, the zone's going down. Yeah, I'm riding. Sticking with us here on Texans 360, Drew Doherty outside NRG Stadium, and a lot is going on this time of year. We just wrapped up the draft. We now know the 2023 schedule, and the Houston Texans Charity Golf Classic happened recently in which the Texans raised hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars for some worthy causes. We also got a chance to catch up with running back Dario Gumbawale, who was really a bright spot in kind of a dark 2023 season. Dari's excited about this new offense, and we chit-chatted about that with him and a little bit more. What have you been doing? What's this offseason been like for you personally? What's what you been working on? Uh, just, you know, getting healthy, you know, making sure that I'm uh, able to stay available all season as I have been. So that's been my focus, just kind of minor tweaks, little little things like that, just to make sure I'm healthy. But besides that, just kind of recuperating, you know, getting getting back, recovering my mind. And I'm getting ready with obviously new staff, so getting my mind ready to learn new offense and stuff like that. But it's just been a lot of focusing on me. It's, it's been good, though. So with all that in mind, how excited are you with the new focus? here in D'Amico Ryans and the rest of that staff and a really interesting offensive coordinator in Bobby Sloan. I'm excited man they they came and energized the room right away you know they the great vibes coming into the uh, to the team meeting room and, and like you said with coach Sloan I mean his offense is is beautiful so it's a lot of opportunity for guys to make plays a lot of opportunity for guys to be put in different situations to make plays so we're all excited man like I said just champion the the role of, uh, of learning the offense you know that's kind of the focus right now learning the playbook learning the concepts so we can all speak the same language so when we get out there in camp, it's, it's seamless. Cool seeing another veteran in the uh, running back room in Devin Singletary. It's a, it seems like a really dynamic room that you guys got there. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great room. You know, it's obviously last year's room was great also, but it's just like you said, it's a different vibe in there, a different dynamic in there. And um, I, I like the room a lot. You know, we got a lot of playmakers, a lot of guys who've done it before and had a lot of success in the league. And um, so just like I said, just guys figuring out their own roles. And um, I think it's going to be a special room. 
How did you spend Thursday night of the draft when the first round was going down, and what did you think of everything? I actually, well, I usually don't watch the draft, which is funny. So this year I decided to watch the first round, and of course it's, we, we shake it up, you know. So it, it was exciting to watch. I felt like I was watching a game. I mean, people are texting me like, yo, did you see that? So no, it was, it was pretty crazy to see that. Um, I, I'm excited to see those guys come in and um, help, help them, you know, kind of help them learn the way of being in the NFL and, um, like I said, help them make some, make some plays. We'll see some of them, all of them, at rookie minicamp. But what have, what have the first few weeks of the offseason program been like for you? How, how, how much has that been helpful, you think? It's been great. You know, just uh, we've got – being in a city like Houston, you got guys are going to come to the voluntary just because Houston's a good city to be in. So um, we've had great, great turnout, great percentage of guys being there. And um, besides that, I mean, it's been good work. You know, we've been, we've been grinding um, already the last couple of weeks, and um, guys have been getting after it. So it's been fun. And um, like I said, being around the teammates, you can't beat that. Dari, go rip it up on the golf course today. Good luck. Yeah, thank, thank you, man. See you later. Like we mentioned, Dari and some of his teammates, along with the coaches in the front office, took part in the Houston Texans Charity Golf Classic. Over the years, millions of dollars raised for some fantastic causes. Welcome to the Houston Texans Charity Golf Classic, the 20th year. How about a round of applause for the Houston Texans Foundation? BMW, all of you coming out here today for an awesome day of golf. Well, welcome everyone. I think uh, we're going to have a great day of golf. Thanks for being here. It's our 20th golf tournament. It's our biggest one yet. Breaking records will be over $400,000. That'll go to the foundation. Good luck, everyone. Good luck. Let's go uh, have some fun. This, this is an outstanding event. Uh, it's fun to be here, uh, support the youth here in Houston. I think our Houston, Texas Foundation has done an outstanding job for the past 20 years of being supportive of the, the kids in our community. And we're all blessed to be in a position where we can reach back out and help others, and that's what it's all about. Right? It's about reaching back, helping others, pulling others up, and just being good people in the community. Blake, it's great to see you, my friend. We're here at the Houston Texans Teen Club graduation ceremony, and there's kiddos out here that are about to graduate from college, having fun. We can hear some of that. What was it like being part of it? Yeah, it was really cool to be a part of it. You know, it's so cool to see youth in this community, their sense of belonging and doing work, doing good, serving other people. I mean, I don't think there's a better feeling than making someone else's day better, putting a smile on someone's face. To see what they're doing at such a young age, it's special, and hopefully these you know young kids continue to do that for the rest of their lives. Congratulations to you all. Keep up to the great work, and understand that that's what life's all about. It's all about uh, people serving people. My name is Chandler, or Miss C, according to the teams, and I'm the club director for the Houston Texas Team Club. There have been many amazing adventures that we embarked on this year, such as our Chevron market pantries, us at the club, taking home first and second place for Youth of the Year, go Kisan and Jaden. Congratulations, class of 2023. I cannot wait to see all the things that you go forth and do. Thank you to the Boys and Girls Club, and always thank you so much for our partnership with the Houston Texans and Chevron for supporting our market pantries. That was a fun time at the Houston Texans Teen Club. It's part of the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Houston. And Nico Collins, Blake Cashman, Toro, the cheerleaders, even me. We were all there celebrating. And we took some time also to talk a little football with the wide receiver. Nico and I had a one-on-one. -on -one. What's it been like this last month? You and I were kind of talking off camera, but yeah. it's a different sort of energy around the it team, is. isn't it? It is, man. Just this new energy, just new juice around the building, man. You just tell the excitement, you know, just when you walk through the doors, man. Just whenever you walk between the lines, and you know, just the, the energy with the coaches, you know, the quarterbacks, the receiver, you know, everybody's pushing each other, you know, just to get better, man, ready to compete, ready to bring some wins to Houston. 
Yeah, what are your first impressions of, of D'Amico Ryans? Man, he's a, he's a great coach, man. You know, it's, he's somebody we can relate to as a player, you know, because he was in our shoes and sitting in our seats, you know, so he can definitely relate. And, um, you know, so for him, you know, it's, it feels good to come back, you know, to somewhere where he played, you know, and then coach, you know. So I feel like it's, it's perfect for him, you know, and I feel like it's a great opportunity for us, you know, to go out and just have fun, man, just ball out. Ball out, you know, it's year three. It seems so weird. It yeah. seems like you just got here. What, what, what's it What's it like? What, what's the goal in year three for you, Nico? Man, just continue to maintain, stay healthy, um, get better, and continue to work on your craft. You know, there's always room for improvement. That's my goal, man, is um, work on the small things from last year, man, and then just keep going. You know, the sky's the limit for everybody. And um, and that's my that's my goal, man, just to keep going, climb the ladder. You've been here for that last month or so. You've seen some of the stuff that the Texans are aiming to try and do yeah. on offense with Bobby Sloak as the coordinator. How might uh, you fit into all that? Because I, I, yeah. I see you smiling when you when I say that, it but it's exciting, isn't it? Is. It really is, man. He bring, he bring the juice to the offense, man. You know, he going to make, make make sure you're going to get the ball in your hand, make sure the playmates are going to make plays. You know, that's his main thing, you know. And the ball in your hand, go make a play. You know, so that's his main thing, man. And just have fun. In the day is football, man. You've been doing this your entire life. You know, so, but I'm excited for the season, man. This is off season, so going to camp, man. Looking really forward to it, for sure. What was it like as a player watching that Thursday night of the draft go down? I mean, that was pretty wild, huh? It was. It was lit, man. It was making moves. I love it. <laughs> I love it, man. They, I feel like they brought the right right guys in. And we really going to turn up, bro. I, I, really, I really feel like it's going to be a great group. It really is. All right. For sure. We're a week away from OTAs. Yeah. What happens then for you? Oh, week away OTAs. Just continue to keep grinding, man. Work on my grind. Uh, continue to stack days, man, and chase my goal. For sure. Just keep going. Just keep getting better. Yeah, we know those goals are big. You look a little bigger. You look a little thicker. I mean, I, you, you've been lifting, I can tell. I mean, not that you weren't before, but you yeah, looks yeah, a little yeah. different for you. Feel better. Feel better, man. You know, just trying to maintain my weight, uh, speed, too. You know, been grinding with Mike in the offseason program, man. Just continue to stick to my, um, my goals, man, and trusting it. For sure. Love it. Well, I know those goals are huge, like we mentioned, and we yeah. can't wait to see you accomplish them, Nico. Yeah. Thanks so much for the time, Thank my friend. You. Appreciate you, Joe. Thanks, bro. During the spring semester, the Texans and Reliant surprised six Houston area high school student athletes with $10,000 college scholarships. Scholarships for Champions program recognizes those students for their work on and off the field, including leadership in athletics, academics, and community involvement. Hi, it's Nia Schneider, our Director of Community Relations at Reliant. I really do care about giving back to the communities where we live and work, and so I wanted to be able to give back to the communities where we live and work. And so today, we have a little bit of a surprise. Everybody ready for the surprise? Today we're here to announce that each of you will receive a $10,000 scholarship. <laughs> Following those surprise check presentations, the honored students, families, and nominators enjoyed a tour of the Houston Texans weight room and locker room. Congrats again to our Scholarships for Champions, and best of luck in the years ahead. Welcome back to Texans 360, and I don't know about you, but I am still reeling from the two big moves the Texans made on the first night of the draft. It happened weeks ago, but there's still an excitement around the city and in the fan base and really inside the organization about what went down. C.J. Stroud, Will Anderson Jr., two guys who were stars in college, are now Houston Texans. They've gone through rookie minicamp, but we took a time out to talk with a couple guys who are experts about those two and shared their thoughts on what the Texans might have in store. Here's James Palmer from NFL Network, and from the Tuscaloosa News, Chase Goodbread. Expectations of Will Anderson as a rookie and expectations of him long-term. What do you see? I don't think he is in any way a developmental guy a project guy he can get the offensive tackle in a bad position very very quickly um he can play with power uh he's better off with speed and quickness you know in terms of getting around him or going inside with an inside move and using his his hands he's an advanced player when it comes to technique 
and that sort of thing. I mean, anybody makes an impact short term, you expect it long term as long as they stay healthy. Uh, and, and to that point, Anderson's been a healthy player. He's been a, a regular starter for two plus years. He really kind of started uh, taking over as a full-time starter, I think in the second half of his freshman year. Uh, and, you know, from then on, he, he didn't miss a game, really. So he, he's uh, he's everything Houston's looking for, I think. What do you think, how do you think he marries with the Bobby Slowick uh, offense? He's the new offensive coordinator, obviously, but he's from that Kubiak, Shanahan tree. It seems like a very, you, you talk about fits and situations to walk into with that regard. Mm -hmm. How much yeah. of a nice marriage might that be? The accuracy plays a part. And kind of Ryan Day kind of told me this a little bit. It's like he, he plays the position with his eyes, his arm, and his feet in unison. And I think that's a huge aspect that when I talk to evaluators, like isn't really that common in college quarterbacks. The, the way that he goes about it, some teams were in, that I talked to were in love with the way it's like, I go, I go through my progressions with my eyes, my arm, and my feet all in unison, and I'm on a platform to throw immediately and that's the way this offense is going to kind of work the way he goes through it and that's a strength of his that not a lot of guys in the in this draft or, or previous drafts really have had all three of those marry together so well and i think that plays a part exciting times now here around the houston texans organization and we really do appreciate you watching we've got much more next week same time same place because hey otas are beginning this week so you won't want to miss that for Gardy Swingby, for Tyler Sudarth, and a host of others who made this show happen, my name's Drew Doherty, and we can't wait to see you again. Till then, go Texans. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.